Dubai is like being on Mars. It is a pretty unique place that you may want to experience and realize how a hostile environment can give rise to a thriving human community. The major difference? It is 1.0 G gravity rather than one third. My name is David Orban and this is The Context. Now, I'm exaggerating, of course. In Dubai, air is breathable when you leave the enclosed air-conditioned hotels or shopping malls. And that difference is not minuscule. It is actually meaningful because Dubai doesn't need to generate its own air. It definitely needs to generate its own water and it has to generate its own energy. Well, it is doing all of these things in a manner that is going to radically change in the next few years because it is doing it unsustainably and it has to become completely sustainable like everything else on planet Earth. And the Martian colonies are going to be obviously the same. A Martian colony that is not 100% sustainable is not going to survive. And 99.999% is not enough either. I have been here in Dubai speaking at the Coin Agenda blockchain conference and I am really intrigued by how unique the place is. Existing outside is hard. Maybe I could survive, maybe not. How long? I don't know. And definitely there are people who work and live outside of the buildings. Construction workers, for example. But to be comfortable, uh, to be able to exist and function and work and think here for an extended period of time requires a completely artificial environment. Those of hotels, those of office buildings or apartments or shopping malls. And this environment is human created, uh, artificial and fed by the energy of oil. Dubai can exist today only because the geographical happenstance of oil being concentrated in the Gulf region. Just to give you one example of the extreme level of unsustainability, yesterday I participated in a rooftop party, uh, a big, big uh, bar uh, with uh, music and LCD screens and maybe tables for 200 people, maybe more. It is on top of a racetrack for horses and it is air conditioned even if it is in the open. Isn't that mind blowing? So Dubai has been able to change in the past already. It uh, fashioned itself into the business and financial center uh, of the Gulf region and uh, even though it was hit hard uh, during the uh, 2008 uh, financial crisis, it was able to uh, survive and today it appears to be thriving. It fashions itself uh, to be fast thinking, fast adapting, welcoming to experiments of different kinds. And of course, then these experiments have uh, the opportunity, at least theoretically, of extending across uh, the United Arab Emirates and beyond uh, in the Gulf region. 
uh, Dubai uh, experiments with many things, uh, with uh, uh, blockchain technologies, uh, with the Internet of Things, uh, with smart cities, uh, and it is planning one of the largest solar installations in the world, generating the cheapest electricity, cheaper even than uh, the electricity derived from oil that uh, they get access to. When you fly into Dubai, you fly across the Mesopotamian deserts. And if you land during the night, you will see a large number of fires in the desert. And you can ask yourself, what are those fires? They are the flares of methane ga gas that is not captured from the oil wells, but this methane is um, burned, burned away into CO2, obviously, uh, rather than being let go in the atmosphere where methane is uh, uh, an even more powerful greenhouse gas than, than CO2. It is impressive to the, see these uh, fires. Uh, in a few hours, I am going to speak about the power of Bitcoin mining that is going to design a new energy and financial system on a planetary scale that is going to stabilize the world and it will substitute the petrodollar. Today we are spending over two trillion dollars per year subsidizing the oil industry uh, and uh, protecting uh, uh, with military force the various uh, supply chains uh, that uh, move oil all, all across uh, the continents. Uh, this is extremely wasteful. When people complain about the wastefulness of uh, Bitcoin, they don't realize that you could, for example, put a container for Bitcoin mining and rather than burning the methane of these dozens and hundreds of oil fields for nothing, for no gain, you could actually run the Bitcoin miners with that uh, methane burning. And then, having transformed energy into Bitcoin, you could beam that Bitcoin to be transformed into energy somewhere else. Because then you could exchange the Bitcoin and pay someone with Bitcoin in order to give you energy where it is needed. And this is true not only for the Gulf area and methane flares, it is true for hundreds of hydroelectric plants, whether in Canada or Patagonia, that are unused, have been built, but they haven't been economical and now they can become economical through Bitcoin mining again. When the age of oil is going to be over, which is a process that has already started, the age of a new infrastructure between Bitcoin and solar and hydro and batteries is going to be born. And this new infrastructure is not going to suffer from geographical accidents generating geopolitical accidents because hydro and sun and batteries and Bitcoin will be globally distributed and globally available. I am looking forward to learn more about Dubai and how it is going to keep reinventing itself maybe developing sustainable technologies that it can commercialize all over the earth and sell to the Martians until they learn even more and sell it back to us on planet Earth. Thank you very much for following this episode of The Context. If you like it, you can become a supporter on Patreon at patreon.com slash David Orban. See you next time.